how system engineering should work, should go, where you, know, you have to give it a, the authorities to, to make that integrate into the acquisition process. What is the system that you're engineering? And so that's a very important question to answer. What is the system you're engineering? And so that work happens early on before a program launches. And so a lot of care and thought needs to be put into each program being tailored, obviously. But then the next, the other pieces are, where are our requirements coming from? What type of mission level objectives are we trying to accomplish? So system engineering is not here to reject changes. We're here to get it the best we can, the best understanding we can to start with. The largest challenges in system engineering is not the engineering. It's integration with all the personalities, all the people, all the nuances of other people. Failures in system engineering can lead to very, very expensive mistakes. Cancellation of programs, people loss of jobs, entire business units disappearing. Hello everyone. I've been looking at this uh, video series. It's about the system engineering and its application in both Department of Defense and commercial industry. Uh, requirements for system engineering are different depending on what side of that fence you're on. They're all striving roughly for the same goals, more efficient execution of programs, preventing late discovery of risk. A lot of those kind of apple pie kind of goals that we always tried to get to, but have always been difficult to achieve. Most importantly, because we haven't had the tool sets and the maturing guidance on how system engineering should work, should go, where you know you have to give it a th the authorities to to make that integrate into the acquisition process. So uh, it's clearly mandated now. You know, as just background, it's it's mandated by DoD. A lot of the DoD large DoD contractors have adopted it under direction, but also because they're experiencing some of the savings and advantages of of system engineering in the context of the digital revolution and um, what we could call reasonable and supplementary and professional guidance, reasonable common sense guidance we've been getting from all of our leaderships, either on the commercial or industry sides. So, so this seems like a good time to sort of bring some of that to clarity. What does that mean? In the past, Systems uh, has had trouble establishing its authority and its clarity and its utility. And uh, now, those days seem to be quickly moving behind us. And so now is the opportunity to revisit this, re-engage, and start building it into our programs in a very serious way. Some companies have already been doing that for decades. Typically, the more successful companies, or maybe better yet, the successful programs in those companies have already been doing this. So it's not uh, new. It's going to be more pervasive, and it's going to be easier to extract that value. So in the small amount of video research I did, and I don't mean to offend anyone that I haven't seen or maybe misunderstood, but system engineering, just as a quick review definition, if you're going to do system engineering, then what is the system that you're engineering? And so that's a very important question to answer. What is the system you're engineering? And so that work happens early on uh, before a program launches. And so a lot of care and, and thought needs to be put into what is that system definition? What are the effects it's supposed to have? When are they supposed to have? What else is it connected to? How widely proliferated is it? And then how... What are those performance metrics that we're looking for to prove to ourselves that the, the systems can deliver the effects they're supposed to deliver? This series is not for the basic research people. 6162, we would call it, or maybe in companies they would call it the first level IRED. You know, IRED that's not actually supporting programs, but rather supporting new ideas, exploration. That's not really what these system engineering programs are for. Uh, it's not that you can't use some of the principles and you wouldn't exclude it necessarily outright, but for the detail 
and the effort that goes into the system engineering process. This is largely expenditures of effort and people to make sure that larger programs, more mature programs, make it to the finish line and are able to be successful in their intended environment with their expected performance and generate those mission effects that the fighters on the commercial side and uh, customers are expecting to have. So when we say system, we're talking about the entire enterprise, or at least considering the entire enterprise, to pull together how all those pieces fit. So you look at the financials of the program, you look at the environment the program's going to be executed in, one site, multiple sites, just the infrastructure of how the program is going to be executed. Talking in generalities, each program will be tailored, obviously. But then the next, the other pieces are, where are our requirements coming from? What type of mission level objectives are we trying to accomplish? To what level of performance? And what set of sequences? What are the contingencies? How is this system supposed to behave, look, operate, and interact with the rest of the world. That is a technology world, more than likely. So you need to have that basic understanding that that's where it starts. So system engineers need to understand or have a good understanding and be able to listen to people in those other domains. System engineers are not operators. They don't carry guns. They don't fly airplanes. But across the team that the system engineers align, there's someone of each of those flavors, whether it's inside the program or has been brought on as advisors, however that happens. All those influences are part of the program and they all count. The other piece is at the top of the system engineering process, all of those influences make a huge amount of difference. Changing one or two little things can have enormous impacts on the flow down to specific lower level work. So it's no small thing to get the top level things correct and then to hold them there uh, for as long as it makes sense for the program. So system engineering is not here to reject changes. We're here to get it the best we can, the best understanding we can to start with. And then when cha things change, we're able to adapt in a way that still leaves the program fully aware of what has changed, how it was changed, the decisions that were made, how it impacts the higher level operations and how it impacts uh, the work breakdown structures and work package assignments and the ordering of the same. So these are the details, some of the details, a lot of the details inside of system engineering. There's a whole separate thing in system engineering about test and how we track performance and how we do test in a discipline such that it's tied to the requirements and the use cases. We'll get into all those words later in the subsequent episodes the point of this video is to show this is a very deliberate process. There are no heroes. There's only work to do this work well. You need to be seasoned in several disciplines that you may be interacting with and then have the personality to ask for help and advice in areas where you don't have experience or don't have cultural relevance. So as a final comment, the largest challenges in system engineering is not the engineering. It's integration with all the personalities, all the people, all the nuances of other people, what they hold value, how you communicate, what you communicate to who. For the same problem or the same situation, you will not connect, communicate it to software people the same way you communicate it to high level leaderships that are worried about budgets in alignment with adjacent systems coming online. So as a group, system engineering needs to be able to wear many hats, have many faces, and perform, act, and interact differently uh, depending on the situation. That's always situation. But just a reminder, what does not change is how the engineering process is orchestrated and what its outputs are. Failures in system engineering can lead to very, very expensive mistakes. Cancellation of programs, people loss of jobs, entire business units disappearing. Sometimes it's not a simple thing. So we're very careful about what we do. Uh, we try to do it very well. We try to do it very fast. The automated tools are helping us with that. And so uh, 
looking forward to getting this season kicked off. It should be a lot of fun. We'll get to see some of those personalities come into play and how, you know, systems and other people are. There'll be a lot of hopefully humorous comments, criticisms of system engineering, and then also some mitigation strategies to help those uninformed and smaller scoped comments be rejected without hurting too many feelings. But again, your feelings are your own business and what we have to do. So we all support each other and we all look out for each other. But just keep in mind that the only thing that matters here is, is the mission success. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. All right, concludes this one. We're going to set the tone for how it goes later. We should have something like 20 of these episodes. This is just an introduction, just to get us going, really get me going on how this is going to go, uh, technically, production point of view. So, uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, hope to see you back. Thanks.